Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Survival Let's Play series with me, Guy Tries. This is episode 10, and if you guys have seen the previous episode, we've made this a big thing over here. <laughs> if you guys haven't, well, let me explain what we've done. We've got two big silos and a building over here, and inside of these silos, we have a couple of bone mill farms, which make bone mill, and then send it into this building where we have an auto crafter at the very top, turning those bone mill into bone blocks. And after they are turned into bone blocks, they get just sent down over here into a little storage area. Speaking of the storage area, I had to modify this a little bit. Well, not too much. <laughs> because this thing makes a lot of bone blocks very quickly. I did some AFK and well, originally we had these four double chests and they were filling up so quick. So I've gone ahead and dug down a little bit and added in, I believe, another seven. Another seven double chests over here. Just so we can have a lot more bone blocks and I believe we have yep so we got a whole bunch of bone mill bone blocks sorry all the way to this chest over here which makes it around eight and a half chests full of bone blocks which is quite a lot and as you can also see we got a whole bunch of white dye as well and I believe it goes through here as well yeah so we've got white dye as a byproduct which is not a good thing but not a bad thing I guess it's just to do with the timings of the auto crafters we can't do anything about it but that's okay <laughs> if we need white dye, we can come into the bone mill farm and grab some from there, which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> but with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's talk about what we are going to be doing today in today's episode. In the last episode, I mentioned how we are going to start making some permanent homes for some of the farms in this starting area. We started off with the bone mill farm. If you guys remember, we had a little bone mill farm over here that we took down and then we made this big thing over there. In doing so, I had to go ahead and remove in XO4's, I think it was his tree farm, yes. We had to get rid of his tree farm. So we are now left without a tree farm. But that's okay because that's what we are going to fix in today's episode. We're going to give a permanent home to a custom tree farm that I made, which I am super excited to show you guys. It's quite small, it's very efficient, and it makes four types of logs. But we're going to do that right over here. Today's build is a tree shop. Though it does look kind of like a factory, but that's okay. We're still going to put it in between these shops over here. As you can see, we've got our iron shop over there, and we've got our fire rocket shop over there. And we also have this really big space of nothing, and that's where we're going to add it. So if I walk all the way up here, you'll see that there is quite a lot of space, but it does require some terraforming, which is something that I am planning on doing. If we come up here, you can see why we've got some terraforming to do, because <laughs> it is quite unsightly. But that's okay. What I'm going to do, I think, I think I will bring this level of grass all the way across. We might bring it down and then we might add a pathway because I am planning to have the build. I'm having the build face this way, which means the entrance will be coming out towards that way. So we should make a path that kind of leads up and around into it. It's quite a big build. I'm sure you guys might have seen the thumbnail already. So we do have a lot of building to do a lot of things together. And of course, it's going to be a rather long video. But if you guys do stick around, I'm sure that it'll be worth the wait. And if you guys do stick around, thank you. Well, with that being said, first thing we've got to do, like most great things, is we've got to dig a hole. we have got to dig a great big hole. Not actually, not a big hole, but a hole nonetheless. And it's just going to be, I think, around here because we do need to fit the farm inside, which is not too bad. We can go ahead and bring out our beacon over here and we can start making that hole. Okay. Actually, we do need some iron as well because we need to out. <laughs> we need to turn on the beacon. And I believe if we go down through here, we can grab some iron. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab one. Thank you. And that way we can set up our beacon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, guys. I'm going to break out that beacon and set it out. I'm going to dig that hole and I'll get back to you guys once we have. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab some things that we don't already have for this build. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay. And there it is, guys. We are all done with the digging portion of today's video. As you guys can see, it is not a very big hole. Relatively speaking, it is a very shallow, very small hole. 
considering that we're going to put a bunch of bits and bobs, including a farm, in here. But that's okay, because we are going to terraform this thing, like I said. So we do have a lot of space, actually. We have about this tall of space. Even over here, though it does look smaller, we are going to bring this little line of grass across and also down to around here. We're going to put in that little pathway, like I said. It's going to lead us up and around into the actual build. And that's just going to connect everything together. And it's going to look amazing. So that should be more than enough space for us today. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get started with the rest of the build. But first, I need to actually go ahead and collect a couple of things. Ironically enough, we are making a tree farm. And I do need some logs, but this tree farm does not work with acacia logs and saplings. Unfortunately, I couldn't really figure that out. So we need to go ahead and get a whole bunch of acacia logs so we can make a whole bunch of acacia trapdoors. Why? Well, I want to make some pipes. <laughs> I want to make some pipes. And I really like the way acacia trapdoors look with those pipes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We should be able to follow some lights. There we are. We'll just follow these sets of lights and we should it should take us to a desert and some badlands and i think beyond that there should be a savannah which we can grab a whole bunch of acacia logs at but it's quite funny because i am doing this and no one's going to see it because it's going to be on the ground this is more for me than it is for anything else and of course you guys are going to see it as well so i guess it's kind of worth it so let's go ahead and let's fly and it should be coming up real soon there it is I hope that's the right one. I should say Badlands and or Desert on it, I believe. Let's have a look. What's that say? Yes, Badland and Desert. Okay, perfect. Right, let's go through. All right, so. Hmm. Let's, I'm not too sure where it is, but let's go ahead and let's go flying. Let's go this way. I'm pretty sure it's this way, is it? Was it that way? Let's go this way. <laughs> Aside from getting acacia logs, we also do need to get a... Oh, jungle. So it should be this way. Aside from getting acacia logs, we still do need a whole bunch of obsidian. I think we need around four or five stacks worth of obsidian to make the blast chamber. So, ah, nice. We've got acacia right there. So we also need to grab that as well. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'll see you guys in a bit. I'll get a whole bunch of these guys and also some obsidian. And then we can start making the farm. And then I'll run you guys do it. All right. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay. And we are back home. Fantastic. Okay guys, so as you can see in my inventory, we got three shulker boxes full of things. And these is pretty much everything that we'll be needing for today in terms of making the actual farm. Let me go ahead and show you what we have. So we have a whole bunch of stone and some redstone bits and bobs. We also have some little things over here. These little things that you see in, I would say, below 10 item category, pretty much just for the decoration that we'll have. There's going to be a little section in here that connects to the actual build in terms of us going up and down into the farm. Okay, so that's what this is for. We also have a whole bunch of observers, sorry, observers and also some obsidian. And in this one, as you guys can see, we have all the acacia trapdoors that we'll be needing again. This is only for aesthetic reasons. We don't actually need this. We could have gotten away with using pretty much anything else for the actual pipes and stuff, but I really like the way acacia trapdoors look for pipes. But that being said, it's time for me to start building this thing and we're going to go ahead and start building the actual tree section farm first and then we'll get into all the other things on this side and i'll explain how everything works and then we'll have a little farm that we need to build the very top not a farm more so a mechanism and i'll explain to you how that works and where i got it from but that being said let me go ahead and do that and hopefully it doesn't take too long and i'll see you guys in just a bit and then we'll actually see if we can get the farm running without it breaking. <laughs> Might take a little bit of troubleshooting, but that's okay. Something that we can definitely do together. Okay, so let me grab some of these things. And then let's start building. Okay, let's go.
Today's comment of the day goes to Jesse, and he says, Just binge watched all nine episodes, and he loves the build style. Inspired to start a new fantasy world. Thank you. No, Jesse, thank you for your amazing comment. I'm glad that you like all nine episodes. Hopefully you liked all nine episodes, and I hope you watch today's one. Thank you. And there it is, guys. The tree farm is now all done. Though we still do need to add some bits and bobs at the very top, and some bits and bobs on the side of here that connect to this farm and to the entire build, but we'll talk about that once we actually build it for now. I wanted to take a quick break and have a look at the actual farm and make sure it works before we continue because if it doesn't work and we build everything, well, it's going to suck to troubleshoot later on. But before we do that, let's have a nice little look at this farm and talk about it briefly. Nothing too special, nothing too crazy with the mechanics. I'm sure you've seen this before in most tree farms. We have the double pistons, as you can see. Also a piston over there. We've got a TNT duper and such. Nothing too crazy indeed. But I'll briefly talk over it. So we have the double pistons over here, which will push the slimes and hundred blocks forward. These chains will help break the leaves and also allow any saplings to pass through and into those hoppers. And those saplings will be fed to me via that dropper. We have a dispenser here with all the bone meal. And we have over here another double piston which will push this block forward all these blocks actually and then it'll push any other logs that come up into this blast chamber over here and once it passes over this observer it'll activate the tnt duper over here which will land just over there blow everything up land in that belly of water and just sent out to a pipe we'll have a pipe that is eventually connected there all the way to the top okay and the tnt duper is activated via that observer that I just showed you over there via this little slime and piston chain just through these copper bulbs and also just connected at the very top over there. So nothing too crazy. The brains of it all is just over here. So once it detects that there is a log, it'll push that little redstone block forward, activating all of this redstone line, which is just connected to the double pistons over there, over there and over here. And that's pretty much how it breaks everything. This is pretty much everything that is needed for this tree farm. This is just a bunch of timings. As you can see, I've used a bunch of rails instead of redstone dust. I heard that redstone dust does lag. So anywhere where I could afford to use rails, I did. <laughs> and also a bunch of observers as well. We go up here. This is our little bow mill section. As you can see, I've already preloaded a whole bunch of bow mill. This is just being fed into this drop over here and to another drop at the very top and then eventually into the dispenser that we saw before. So that is a quick rundown of the actual build, which means it's time to go ahead and test it. So I've got a bunch of saplings over here already. We'll try with the oak. Let's see, is it on? No, a little feature that I've added is a little oak block height limiter. As you can see, we have this, which will let us know when it's turned on. That block over there sets a limit to the height of which a oak sapling can grow guys don't already know if it is at a certain height it can branch out quite literally and it'll lead to this farm breaking so we want to keep it around that height so then it only gives us around five blocks worth of logs versus seven or more and then it doesn't break the actual farm that's turned on let's go ahead and let's go and try this thing oh we need to turn on the actual farm let's go ahead fantastic okay so that's oh <laughs> okay <laughs> So that's ticking, which means we can place it down. Fantastic, it's working. It's crushing all the leaves. We should be getting some things back in our inventory. Yes, we are getting some saplings. Awesome. That's getting pushed through. Awesome. So it looks like it's working. We should hit the TNT. Yep, that's one. Oh, looks like we're going to take damage. But that's okay, because we do have a beacon, and we can set that to health regen, I think. But let's keep going. Everything's okay. Fantastic. Awesome. So as you can see, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We'll turn that off for now. Not too sure why that's happening. That didn't happen before. Oh, that's because I took off the um <laughs> the redstone torch. Anyway, so this, the oak is working. Let's go ahead and let's try some spruce. So we'll put that through there, and we should turn off this thing. Let's have a look. Did it turn off? Yes, it's turned off. 
we should be able to grow some seven tall spruce. Let's hope that works. Hold it down. Yes, it's growing. Getting crushed. Fantastic. It is exploding. Awesome. It looks like it's all working, which means that we can start building the rest of this build. Let's go ahead and turn this thing off over here <laughs> before we take any more damage. Put everything in here. Well, and we should have a whole bunch of logs. There it is. Perfect. So we do have logs coming through the other end, which means we can finally finish the rest of this build and connect everything else to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And I'll see you guys once we're doing. We'll have a nice little chat about it. And then we'll go ahead and finish the rest of the build. I'm super excited for you guys to see the actual build and how everything works. I'll see you guys in just a bit, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are now all done with today's build, except not really. <laughs> this is just a little bit that is connected to the actual farm so we can get in and out from the actual build that we'll eventually put on top. But as you can see, and also from what you saw in the time lapse, all the little, ah, <laughs> in the little time lapse, we have now finished with the rest of the build in terms of the actual mechanical features. Can I land in here? Fantastic. <laughs> So we've finished everything. We've done all the pipes. As you can see, we needed a bunch of acacia logs just so we can make that. But come on, guys. Does that not look aesthetically pleasing? Of course, we do have these little bits and pieces as to gas because we need to put water on that. And if you use water on a trapdoor, it just goes through. So <laughs> just blocks there and also some ice so then things can travel through it quicker. And inside we have some, I think we have some scaffolding and all fences. Either or, but as you can see, all the pipes are now finished. This is the collection center, as you can see. And once we do have everything, it just goes up into here and it'll travel across and into these item sorters and just get on there. Ouch. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So it travels across and as you can see, we've got two sets of four of these item sorters and each one has a specific log that we can make. For example, we have oak in this one. We have oak as well. I think this one is spruce. This one should be birch and the next one should be jungle so once we do have all of the logs that come through and get funneled and filtered basically it's just going to be sent into either one of these pipes we've got a little dropper system over there so once it detects when there's items in the actual dropper when it gets funneled through it's just going to send it across these pipes accordingly and each one has its own little block for example that's oak that is the spruce that is the birch and that is the jungle and just goes straight up into these other pipes of course it's not completely finished it's stopped there because we actually need to make the rest of the build. But we'll get to that once we do. For now, let's go ahead and let's continue on with this little tour. Too crazy over there. Let's go to the very top and let's have a nice little look at what we have going on over here. So we have a bunch of things going on over here, as you can see. But first and foremost, we have a shulker box unloader and that's made by Kale. If you guys do want to know how to make this, of course, everything will be linked in the description down below but just a normal shulker box unloader coming down here we have rapscallion's little fancy multi-item sorter it's a fantastic little thing something very small something very unique because well we don't want to sort everything into individual storage units i believe so this here as you can see we've got a whole bunch of things that we can sort into one particular chest so all we need to do is take out these item blockers and fill it up with the items that we want to stack all in one chest as you can see i've already just indicated oh, <laughs> i've already gone ahead and put in the different types of logs that we can get just to remind me oh <laughs> just to remind me which one goes where and you guys can also see in my inventory got a bunch of shulker boxes and in each one is the different types of blocks that we are going to sort for this particular system now i could try to explain this to you but i would definitely butcher it so i would recommend you guys go ahead and check out Rapscallion's video. Of course, again, it is in the description down below. So for now, we're just going to sort everything as is. 
believe this is the jungle, so let's go ahead and grab the jungle one. Um, where should we put it? Over here? Oop, that's not a good idea. We don't want to cut that off. <laughs> let's go ahead and put it right here. Perfect. So we will take out the blockers here. Fantastic. Let's see, actually, we should take out most of them. And let's put all those in there and we'll grab it all like that. And I think it should just be easy as bring them all in. Fantastic. Oh, okay, it's like that, like that, and perfect. So we're actually going to get rid of the jungle log. This one is going to have its own specific little storage section. So we're just going to take that out. That was just a reminder. So we know which one goes where. So perfect. So let's go ahead and let's do the rest of these chests. Let's add in these filters and then we'll give it a quick test before we continue on with the rest of the build. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and test it. Hopefully it works. Let's go chuck some items inside. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we'll put all of these planks inside and see what happens. Let's see if it actually sorts it out. Right, let's go down and let's get a nice little spot to see if it works. We should start seeing things getting spat out. So if we hear a little ticking noise, we should. Oh, there it is. It's below us. <laughs> Perfect. So I didn't keep count of how many things got spat out, but let's go down and let's have a look. Hopefully there should be four of each planks around here somewhere. And if we do, then it's all systems go and we can continue with the rest of this build. That's four for that. Grab all of them. Put some down here. And we are missing some. Leave. This is the spruce. So we got... There we go. The last two. <laughs> Ouch. And the last two we can get. Perfect. So we got all four different planks that we put through the item filter. And that just goes to show that it is all working. Which is fantastic. Aid on. <laughs> so that is all working. That's all done. Now we got to go ahead and build the rest of this actual build actual building that will go on top so it doesn't look as funky as it does right now and then i can explain how everything works and show you as well and also we'll have a nice look at the actual build it's a fantastic build i am super excited for you guys to see that so please stick around but that being said as the sun sets i'm gonna go ahead and make this final build and i'll see you then okay guys see you in a bit And the next comment of the day goes to Whistle Hammock. And he says, I think the word you're looking for with the wind catcher is weather vane. Only halfway through the video while commenting, but love the build so far and the editing too. Whistle Hammock, thank you so much for that correction. Yes, it is in fact called a weather vane. Thank you so much for that correction. And I'm happy that you're enjoying the video and also the build. Thank you for your comment. All right, guys. We are now finished with the entire build. As you can see, we have everything set in place. We've got the build. We've got the farm that you saw me build at the start. And we've also got the little decorations 
along the sides and also inside as well. Of course, you guys will get to see that. But first, I just want to have a quick little run through of this entire place. As you can see, we, ouch, <laughs> we've got two beacons going on at the moment. That's because we do need it. In fact, we might have to find a nice permanent home for these guys as well. We need it because when we do farm the actual trees, we do take some damage. So with a little bit of resistance and also regen, we can actually, as you can see, not wear any armor and still be okay. We can actually farm them for quite some time, for a long time before anything happens. So <laughs> we've got that going for us as well. And the speed boost, sorry, the jump boost is just there for fun. But let's go inside here. As you guys can see, this is the interior. Actually, you know what? Let's go back outside because we actually haven't taken a very big or very nice look at the actual build. So let's go far and let's have that look. I should put on my wings, but you know what? It doesn't matter. We're in daytime. We shouldn't be in any kind of trouble, I think. <laughs> but anyway, here we go, guys. Right in front of me is the build. Doesn't it look gorgeous? I think it looks amazing. I love the way everything has turned out with this entire build. We've got the walls. We also got the nice little castle bit, this little factory section, and also that nice little house slash shop. This is a tree shop, like I said. So we are going to be, quote unquote, selling wood. Hey guys, hey, 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 shh, shh, shh. <laughs> we are going to be selling some wood and also some logs and all that stuff to do with logs. But of course, only for the four different types of logs that we can actually generate. But this, this is the path. This is the nice little walls that we've gone with. As you can see, we've decorated it with some nice tuff, some nice cobblestone and a side end into stone as well. And at the very bottom, we do have some mossy cobblestone as well because, you know, green does go up. I think that's the best way to explain it. But, you know, things do eventually get a little bit mossy if it is touching grass as well. We also have some lichen as well, just for that little extra transition from up close. Not too bad of a thing, but if you step a little bit back, you can see it does look a little bit better. So, got that wall. We've got it wrapping all the way around this build. And also over here, we do need to finish it over here. I'm not too sure how far I want to extend it, but I do know this is a nice finish point. So, can leave that there for now maybe we'll bring it around here and wrap it all the way around just maybe to that little sewer area that we have where we have the villages as well but something we can do another time maybe in the next episode we can tackle that as well but let's go up this nice little pathway as you can see it is very clean not a lot of things going on yet not yet guys we will add all that stuff in just not in this episode because this episode is taking far too long i have been making this thing for quite some time and I did want to get this episode out to a week earlier, but it did take a lot of planning and a lot of designing. So I hope you guys don't mind for the delay. But anyway, moving on, we have the actual building itself. We have a nice little shop. And then, like I said, right next to it's the actual factory. With the build today, I did want to do less of a gradient than I've been doing for all the other builds. As you can see at the, what do they call that? The Saho Farm. No, not the farm, the bone mill farm just down there. We did a lot of gradients, a lot of weathering. But for this one, I just wanted to keep it simple. Simple colors, simple textures, and also some simple designs. So we don't really have, I would say, gradient. More so just staining around the edges. Think of this yellow right here, the smooth sandstone as the base color. And everything else in between, everything else over it, such as the dark colors, like the sandstone, the stripped birch, and also the birch planks. Just a little discolorations from the sun that we get right over there it's just hitting this thing permanently so a little bit more weathering than gradients but i think it's turned out great and also you can see we've stuck with the same kind of wood types we've had for the salo the farm over there the bone mill farm some oaks some jungle i really like the jungle and the way it's kind of matching in with the spruce and also the oak it's a nice in-between color which i didn't really think would work but hey i think it did not too bad this one. As you can see, we're using signs again just for that little transition for that horizontal line that kind of gives us so that our eye can see that little adjustment in color. I also use signs over there as well just to highlight a little bit more of, I would say, detail at the very top. And if you guys did watch the time lapse, I did put my little face over the little graffiti as well, just a little Easter egg or a little nod to myself. <laughs> Don't usually do stuff like that, but I thought that was fun. And I hope it turned out great. I hope you guys like that. But other than that, nothing too crazy about this build here. I like the way little spikes at the top work. As you can see, we put some signs there. 
and from up close I can see why like, it looks kind of doo-doo I think maybe not actually you know what no it looks okay but if I do put it on my wings and we kind of fly a little bit away and not too far away we can get a little bit closer so they kind of come in and look pretty cool just the way they add a little pop outside of the fences that we are using a little bit more depth I would say but nothing else going on there around here we do actually have some colors some different colors <laughs> other than brown we are going to be using a lot of pots as you can see we got a lot of pots here and a lot of pots inside I've really fallen in love with these things these things are these things are great for decorating just their color and just the way they look and also the way you can put candles inside of them look at this candle candles inside of this, this is a great way to decorate I really love that so I've got a few of those pots and also some candles in each and every one. Also got some beehives, some scaffolding, some chisel bookshelves just laid all around this area to make it look like it's just been lived in and people just, you know, the people in here just can't be bothered with sorting things. They're just kind of chucking it wherever. So that being said, we can actually go ahead and check the inside out. So let's do that. Let's close this door. So inside, as you can see, we got a whole bunch of decoration. I am really loving the way it had turned out. This, I would say, is better than the iron shop. I really love decorating the iron shop, but this this turned out great. This turned out amazing. So as you can see, we got logs all stacked around the area. We've got some here. We've got some over there. We've got over there. We've got some up there as well. We've also got some over here and also in the back here because this is a log shop. So, you know, we do need to sell logs. And with that in mind, I've also made this little door over here. As you can see, not just some random door, but a door because how are they going to get all the stuff inside? I think these are the little details that you need to think about when you are designing these things so with a door there and that's how they bring in all the logs and we're using the classic rail trick to keep all the logs looking like they're tied down and also we've got that stuff over there and that classic trick with the signs holding them in and with the campfires scattered in as well but other than that nothing too special we've got little bits and bobs that can take you everywhere for example you can come up here you can climb up onto this ladder and you can get a nice little bird's eye view of the shop so like i said more logs and over here is where we store all the leaves, the four different types of leaves that we can get in this entire... Uh, 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 okay, please. Come on. Okay, I guess we can't go that way. That's fine. <laughs> so we got birch leaves. We got, I think, jungle leaves. No, acacia leaves. No, birch leaves. That is spruce leaves. <laughs> That's jungle leaves. And I believe that is oak leaves. So we got all four of those across there. So nothing too crazy. But the decorations of all make this whole place feel lived in. And also under here we got some carpets which is covering some honey blocks because eventually we will put someone here and we don't want them to escape. But with that out of the way, let's talk about how this thing actually works functionally. So as you guys know, we do have a tree farm underneath us and we also did make an item sorting system, a multi-item sorting system at the very top in that little castle that we'll get to later on. But basically... It all gets funneled through here and as you can see we have all these different types of logs here and these guys just indicate what we can grab i've already tested this out so let's go ahead and open a few things so in this stuff we got all the oak stuff and this one we got all the spruce stuff and in here the birch and lastly the jungle so as you can see things are currently working not too shabby at all and over here is where we keep the mass amount of logs i've actually tried everything out so we do have some logs in here as you can see we've been afking in here a lot of spruce and over here we got a lot of birch i think we don't have that much jungle yes i didn't do jungle yet because i figured after the birch everything was working well enough so i should go ahead and start recording and show you guys how everything works and speaking of let's go ahead and as you can see we got a bunch of things here we need to sort all this stuff out so we're gonna do that together i already know it works let me just go ahead and quickly eat actually <laughs> we're going to go ahead and sort this out together and this is how it works so we're going to put it in here once it goes into this barrel it's going to be sent all the way up to the very top and once it does it'll get sorted so let's go ahead and do that and there it goes it's going to be spat out by this drop over here it's going to go down this little pipeway and then it's going to go all the way to the top of this nice big castle thing and then it's going to find its way into a shocker box unload and that's just going to do exactly what the name suggests and as all the items pass down they're going to go through rapscallion's multi-item sorter 
and it's just going to pass through a whole bunch of filters and if it matches the filters it's going to get dropped down to the individual or to the corresponding pipes over here which then find its way into the room as you guys can see we've got the hitboxes on and it's just coming on through but let's go ahead and let's make sure let's have a look inside we should start seeing things getting put inside of the storage system which is fantastic and that is how we will get all the items that aren't logs all the logs will go into this area over here and speaking of which while that does that let's go ahead and uh let's take a little nap first and let's go have a look at the actual room of where we will be making all of our logs so this is the factory this is where we'll be making most of everything as you can see it is filled with a whole bunch of pipes and that is not by accident the way i like to build is by actually using where i can the redstone as an actual feature of the build i think often as builders we don't generally pay attention to that stuff so instead of hiding it which i admittedly did for some of the build i actually like to use it as a feature so that's what you see up there we get a whole bunch of redstone a bunch of pipes because it looks really cool and it kind of matches the tone of a factory but what do you guys think do you think this kind of works it doesn't work let me know in the comments down below do you guys like the pipes do you like the vibe do you like the way i've kind of incorporated these two elements of minecraft together but anyway let's continue and in here nothing special just a nice little i guess cave slash dungeon but if we come down through here this is where the magic happens we go through here we come down again ouch and this is the wood farm that we've been working on before let's take off all our gear because the TNT does actually destroy some of our stuff and it does take down the durability. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. And let's show how everything works. So you already know how the tree farm works, but let me go ahead and show you how the logs actually get sorted. So as you know, we grow the trees and the trees explode and then they go down into this little collection system over here, which then goes up these pipes and across these item filters and much like before once they get sorted they get sent into their own individual pipes and they go up around and into the actual building but with that being said let's get out of here it is quite loud and let's take what we can let's turn off the farm and let's call the end of today's episode that in there we have a little composter just down there to make us some extra bone meal okay let's take that off let's go up and out into the lights where we can conclude today's episode so that is it guys that was today's episode i hope you did like it it was a fantastic build a fantastic little adventure that i had to go on for this we had some building we had some redstone we also had some terraforming we had the trifecta of things that we could do in minecraft not including gathering gathering materials is so cathartic of course i don't like to show all that because it is quite long and some people might find it boring but guys i did hope you enjoyed today's episode i sure as hell loved making today's episode ah look at that thing <laughs> in the next episode we are going to spice some things up we're going to actually start decorating this area there was a fantastic comment in the previous episode about adding paths adding rocks adding things and that to make things feel more alive and that's exactly what we are going to do in the next episode we take things nice and slow and we might actually get a video out when I plan to. That is usually every two weeks instead of every three or four weeks. <laughs> so we'll do that. We'll take a nice little break from building big things like this. Big technical things. And we'll start making some custom trees, some custom rocks and decorate the things that we do have. Because everything, although it is nicely built, it's not really connected. Some people have mentioned in the comments and they're absolutely right. Nothing is really connected. As you can see, we don't have a pathway that leads into the silo, the bone mill farm over there. So we're going to fix things up. We're going to decorate these rocks. We're going to add some more rocks, add some more custom trees and make things more lived in. Okay, guys. So if you do have anything that you would like me to add into this world, little small things, please let me know in the comments down below. And we'll go ahead and we'll add that. And then hopefully it'll make this place nice and lived in. But with that being said, guys, that concludes the rest of this episode. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you did enjoy, please let me know by liking and or subscribing. Subscribing would be awesome. And if you guys would love to leave a comment, I would love to read it. I do respond to every comment, I believe. I try my best to, although I do get delayed on that sometimes. But I definitely do read each kind of comment and I definitely do reply to them. So, guys, that being said, I'll see you 
in the next episode, okay? Bye.